I'm Nicole McLaughlin, and I'm a designer that reworks existing pieces, and these are my design essentials. So one of my most important things is my toolbox. I usually have it with me at all times. I have a very specific preference for pins. I usually go for these guys. Anything that's like super flimsy will just break on what I'm working. Most importantly, my needles and thread is kind of my go-to. It's, it's what I will rely on to attach the uppers to the soles. This is something I found thrifting, and I mean, with every project I do, that's kind of how it starts. When I'm thrifting, I always try to look for interesting fabrics or different trims on the garment, even if it's like just cool like webbing details. For me, I love to highlight the pockets and, and the branding on the pockets. Jackets are definitely my, my go-to. So this is my cutting mat that I use. I pretty much use it under all of my projects so I'm not cutting up my whole floor. It's super thick, you need to have that buffer behind it. An underrated part of my process is actually a hammer. I use it a lot when it comes to like more difficult and thicker fabrics, because just to get the natural shape. One of the most important parts of the process is cutting the excess fabric. Because I love to keep the scraps, I'll actually use this rotary knife to keep a more clean edge. The first thing I actually made was a shirt out of Dover Street Market tissue paper. It was obviously really conceptual and I couldn't wear it. And I think once I did that, it kind of opened up the doors for like how much you can do with these things, like these leftover scraps. The, the biggest question I get is like where I'm finding the soles. If you're thrifting, I usually run into some interesting like sandal bottoms or just any type of cool like trail bottoms I try to pick up. I'll take the upper off of it and then reuse the soles for different projects. I try to pick soles that are interesting and all kind of have like a personality to them. I love like a ripple bottom, gives you more of a trail feel. So it started really just with footwear is kind of how I began doing this and I just was picking up different jackets and, and interesting types of garments and working them into a slipper shape. This was just from a jacket that I had found and it had really interesting details. So like the heel on this is the, the hood of the jacket um, and it had these draw cords and I attached it to the back neck uh, label. One of my more favorite pieces that I did was actually the volleyball slipper. I think it was just because it was one of my more conceptual first pieces that I had done. And once I had did that, I was like, wow, it's like boundless. There's so many things you could do. From footwear, I was just really inspired and I wanted to kind of expand even more upon that. So I started working on apparel. So I didn't know how to use machines or, or do any of that. So I learned how to hand sew and then eventually learned how to use machines. So that's helped me a lot when it comes to garments. I love obviously branding. So I try to highlight that as much as possible. And for me, I try to not waste anything. So I made these shorts with some interesting patchwork detail. That's kind of the signature style I go for, is more of like patchwork and highlighting branding on different pieces. An underrated part of my process is actually taking the photos. So socks are a huge highlight of that when you're capturing footwear. I always try to pick the color of the sock to go with whatever I'm doing, so it's definitely a thought out process. And lastly, just finished product of all the things I've done. This was actually a book that we did for the LA Art Book Fair. I did it with Ignored Prayers, so it was a cool collaboration between the two of us. It's kind of a cool piece to have and to kind of realize how much stuff that I have made and all the pieces that I've been able to come up with.